Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today's video is a very requested video. I've had so many comments in the past two weeks about this and I've been meaning to film it but I've just had plenty of other things to be getting on with. I've had a really, really busy week. So we are doing Postals 101 and it seems quite fitting because my postals are going crazy at the moment. Um, I think it's because obviously we're still in lockdown so a lot of people are ordering for birthdays just as gifts. So I have got so many postals. I posted four out today, three yesterday, two the day before, and then I've already got four orders for next Tuesday. No, I've already got four orders for next Monday going out. And then I've got a couple for later on in the week, but I'm getting orders even today and tomorrow. So it is very busy with postals. So I thought that I would share all this because it's all fresh in my mind because I'm doing it literally every day. So. I'm going to be going through packaging with you guys, I'm going to be showing you all of my packaging, I'm going to be going over the legalities of it because obviously there are certain things that you have to have in place in order to be posting food items and there's also places to sell. So this is just some tips on where you can sell these bakes and kind of the best places to use as well as what you need. I'm going to finish with a little checklist. So I'm going to be putting in chapters into this video so obviously skip to the bits that you need to if you don't need certain areas if you're already familiar with those but yeah what you need is going to be at the end and i'm going to do a little tick list for you guys to follow so if you haven't already please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos and make sure you hit the bell so that you're notified every time i upload and let's get right into the video so we're going to go over packaging first some of these items i just buy on these websites i don't necessarily know the exact listing but it will make it easier for you guys knowing where they're from, but also understand that it does take me a lot of time to find the exact link. So a lot of the time when people ask me where things are from, I give them the website, but I can't necessarily give you the exact listing. I will try and put listings in the description, but if they're not in there, that's probably because it's taken me too long to try and find it. So the first thing, we're gonna go through like the process. So we've got the box, which is the first thing. So these are my boxes, obviously depending on how big your postals are, whether it's brownies, blondies, literally whatever you're posting, cookies maybe, you need to find a box that is the right size. I literally typed in the size that I needed into Google and then searched for hours trying to find the right one. So obviously if you don't need one this size, then you can't necessarily just buy the same box as me. So you need to work out how big you want your brownies, blondies, whatever you're selling to be, and then you wanna find the box after you've done that. So this is the box, it is a cardboard box, so not white cardboard, it's just brown cardboard. That makes it cheaper and they're also easier to find. Some of the white ones, it can be really difficult to find the size that you need because you're wanting it to be white as well. So as you can see, that's how you open it. So it all interlocks like so. And it's also not too deep because for what I'm posting, which is brownie trays, I don't want them too deep because then they're gonna move around a lot. So as you can see, that fits in nicely and gives me space to put bubble wrap. So these are the trays, these are just off eBay. So they go in nicely. The boxes are either Amazon or eBay. I couldn't find the exact ones. If I find it, I will put it down below. Um, but yeah, these are the boxes so that allows room for space. It also means that this fits in my four separate brownies because I sell four separate brownies and then I also sell trays as well. So it means that they will nicely fit in there. So these are the trays in the box. Then each tray goes into a cellophane bag. So in order to do postals, I can't find a place to put this box. Um, in order to do postals, you need to make sure that they're fresh because obviously if you send someone something and it's off or it's really dry, you're gonna get a bad review. So you wanna make sure that it comes and it is nice and fresh and it is perfectly sealed. So some people don't bother putting theirs in cellophane. I personally find that it makes them a lot fresher. So I have these little cellophane bags. These are just off Amazon. And again, if you search for the size you need, then you will find them. They're very common on there. It's not like it's a one-off listing sort of thing. So they just have this pull seal so you just pull that off and stick it down so easy they fit the trays in perfectly as you can see and it's just keeps it fresh they also fit the separate brownies in they fit four separate brownies of an average size mine are quite big 
compared to other people's so if your brownies are average size they should fit in there and then if i'm doing boxes of six or eight then i just put more cellophane bags in there so those are the cellophane bags then i have these postal bags so this is the postal bag my tray boxes because i've changed the boxes recently to make them smaller so that it's more tightly packed and then less room for them to move they actually fit in half of the bag like that so i fold it completely over I don't think I'm going to get any smaller ones just because it's the same price to get the bigger ones and it means that if I do send bigger boxes of like six or eight then they're going to fit in here. So these are again just off Amazon. There are literally hundreds of different colours. You can choose different patterns if you wanted to. I'm actually planning to get some funkier ones so they'll have like palm trees on them or something because I've seen quite a few cool ones. So yeah you want to put them in that because a cardboard box is not waterproof so especially if it's got food in it you need to make sure it's waterproof so you put them in these postage bags and it keeps it nice and waterproof safe and it also acts as another ceiling layer so if you think that the brownies are in the cellophane that keeps them fresh but then they're in a box and then they're also in another bag so it just makes them nice and sealed nice and airtight so that they don't go dry or you know any um like smells or bacteria getting in there because um if like if you put your box in the fridge if you don't seal the box like if you just put a plate of brownies in there then smells can cling to things so it same works the same with cakes so you want to make sure that even if you're just putting them in the fridge at home they're always boxed up because that way they won't cling to any smells in the fridge and then not smell like brownies or not smell nice um so the next thing is these postage documents enclosed so i just want to say before because i think you guys will probably notice these are way too big um i ordered the wrong ones on amazon but they are this um product they're just a smaller version so as you can see this is basically the same size as my postage boxes i ordered the wrong ones i was meant to get the a5 which are this big um but you basically put your postage label um you can either print it off or i just write mine out because it's easy so you just put that in there then you peel off this white background and then it sticks to your um, box and it's really really easy and again that keeps it waterproof because what you don't want is you to put a sticker on the front of there and then the postman can't read the address because the stickers got wet so it just keeps everything sealed and it also means if you need to put any documents in there like return address anything like that depending on what you're posting then you can put it all in here and it's all safe so that is those you can get those off amazon but make sure you get the smaller ones because these ones are way too big and i've got a hundred of them so what i'm planning to do is just cut them in half and then i can use half of it so that's what we're going to do um the next thing is kind of like decorative related so this is each to their own you can order slightly different versions of these but it's the same concept so you want to have a business card so this is my business card uh, it just says sweet things by amy and my logo then you want to have your details on there so i've got find us on facebook or instagram i've then got those handles then i've got a contact email and then thank you for your order if you have an etsy site which obviously i didn't before i got these i would put that on here and then it means that if people are ordering them as a gift because i actually had someone today who they were bought them as a gift um by someone else and then they've now come onto my Etsy and they bought two boxes, so like £25 worth of brownies. And they've now ordered them for someone else as a gift. And it's just a chain because they've ordered them as a gift when they receive them as a gift. And then the person that they've ordered them for might then buy them again. So it's good when people are buying them as gifts because then it broadens your customer base. So you want to make sure that you've got plenty of business cards and like thank you notes to go in there because that all kind of makes an impact on that because people open it and it will be nicely placed and like decorated in there. Then I, because this will get lost in the box, I have these thank you stickers. I have like hundreds of these. I got them off Amazon and they were seven pounds for I think a thousand and they just say thank you for supporting my small business. And yeah, it's just a nice little sticker. I use it to stick the cards to the lid of the box. So I stick the business card here. And then if we move on to the allergen labels and everything, it's just so that I can show you where I place them. So I then have these labels which I created and I will stick one of these on here 
because it is the perfect size to fit there. So that's really good. So just briefly on these labels, um, I will go into this in the legalities part because we're currently on the packaging part. Um, but it just says the ingredients, the allergens and the storage just has all that information on there so I can stick it into the box nice and easy. Then we have these thank you notes. So a pro tip because it was a really smart idea that my mum actually had. So I bought these, I bought 20 of them and it just says thank you for your order and then it's got my Instagram handle in the corner here if it will focus. There you go. Um, so I bought these and they were £6 for 20 which is really good. But what my mum had the smart idea of doing is photocopying them. So these are the ones that I ordered. And then what I would say is you photocopy them. They, I know some of them are upside down but obviously you cut it up. So I photocopied it and then I just use one of those um, like school cutters. I don't know if you guys will remember, but it's like a it's like a rectangle um, and it's got a little cutter and it's all safe, like the blade and everything. But you just put it on your table and then you can cut paper with it. Um, but that's what I use because it's really easy. Or you could use scissors if you wanted to, but I would just end up cutting them wonky. So that's why I use that professional cutter. Um, but yeah, and this is obviously free because I'm using my mum's printer. But even if you're not, ink is very low cost in terms of how many you would print off for that. I printed off 30 and it didn't even make a dent on the paper or the ink. So yeah, you could definitely just print this off and you could do it in black and white if you wanted to there's a pink heart on there but you could print them off in black and white so yeah definitely saves a lot of money doing that so those are those labels then i have these these were actually incorrect but i'm going to show you them anyway i'm just not going to tell you where they're from they were from etsy but i'm not going to tell you the seller because i wasn't happy with them but they are some logo papers um but they were way too faint to actually as you can see you can barely see it so um yeah i actually got them refunded but i just use them because i need to use them up otherwise they're going in the bin so i use them in the bottom of my postals um even though you can't really read what it says but it's just your logo so you can get logo printed on translucent paper and it just looks nice to have it in the bottom of a box so yeah those are for packaging um these labels i have gone through and then I got these from Vistaprint. I just have some big stickers, which I put on the top of the box. So it's on the outside when they open it. Um, and it's also on the box so that when they take it out of that postal bag, it's got my logo on it because I don't want to put it on the postal bag because that's just going to get thrown away. Um, so that is everything in terms of packaging. Now we are on to the legalities of posting. So, in terms of legalities, you need to have a few things or need to be a few things. So, this includes being registered. Obviously, you can't be selling um, baked goods, especially online, if you aren't registered. You need to make sure that you have the necessary insurance because what you need to think about, because a lot of people don't, because there are a lot of people that aren't registered, um, is if you make someone ill because you effectively don't know what you're doing or you might not be experienced enough and you don't have that insurance and you're also not registered with the council one i'm pretty sure that there's some um kind of like penalties for that but also it's just you don't want that on your conscience like i don't want to ever make anyone ill from my bakes and i haven't so far i've never had a bad review touch wood um so I just, I don't want to risk it. I like to be insured, obviously, so that if anything goes wrong, you're insured, so you can pay your way if someone puts in a claim. So it's just the safest thing to do. It's better not to take the risk. And in terms of registering, um, yeah, you, you can get sort of done for it. I don't know what the term is, but you know what I mean. Um, so it's just good to be registered and not risk it. Obviously it's difficult at the moment with COVID, that's why a lot of people in terms of bakers are sort of moaning that there's a lot of unregistered people and it's because with COVID they're struggling to keep up with it. But I definitely would not recommend it at all um, because it just puts a bad name to people that are registered in terms of pricing and 
just everything basically because they will get said that they're overpriced and stuff like that but that is a whole another story but just make sure you're registered and insured because if anything does go wrong even if you think that it won't it will come and bite you in the ass, basically so um you want to be insured and make sure you're insured for the right things in terms of like public liability how much you're insured for because the value does make a difference um, and what it covers as well and also the provider and make sure that you're getting a good insurance plan um, I'm with Simply Business if that helps anyone they're really recommended by um, all bakers pretty much so I definitely recommend them as an insurance provider um, the next thing is you have to have these stickers so these stickers that I showed you this is again something that a lot of people don't include. I actually had someone in a review say that they were really impressed that I added full ingredients list, allergens and storage because they'd never seen that on any other postal boats that they bought. So it's definitely something that you have to have. So these are the stickers. You can handwrite it, you can put a little piece of paper in there, you can put a sticker, whatever you want, as long as it's in there. So this is because you have to justify it because it is classed as pre-packed goods so it's as if you went to tesco's and you bought a sandwich there is a full ingredients list on there there is a sell by date there is storage information so it will say keep in the fridge and there is full allergens so it's because it's classed as pre-packed because it is a postal item so basically what i have on here is i have my ingredients so just as as an example um this is just blondie ingredients so i've got like butter white chocolate plain flour and it's listed like that and then i have toppings so i write whatever toppings are in there so jammy dodgers jam etc then i have allergens which are in bold so it just says milk eggs gluten may contain nuts and this is because obviously again if you send these postals to someone and they have an allergic reaction it's not necessarily their responsibility to tell you that they have an allergen um, it's your responsibility to label your items correctly so if you're not labeling your items correctly and someone orders from you and then they have a nut allergy and they didn't tell you and they have a reaction then it will be your fault um, they would blame you unfortunately as Kind of wrong as that is so it's better to put full allergen lists and full ingredients on there so that if anyone does have a reaction you can say that my listing says that i deal with allergens and i also gave you a full allergen list on the actual item that you received so it just covers you again in terms of insurance that you've done nothing wrong and then in terms of storage you need to put how to store these items because someone could just not bother reading the listing even if you have it in there i have all these details in the listing but i put a sticker in there so that they have it right in front of them and they don't have to check the listing so you have to have storage and also a baked on slash sell by date so mine just says put your blondies in the fridge for 30 minutes once received and blah 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 and then it says that they last for up to seven days from the date below and then I put a baked on date below so it means that if they arrive after that baked on date which could be due to postal delays then they will know not to eat them so um, if they were to arrive after the baked on date or the sell by date that you put on there I would recommend that you advise them not to eat them um, so that's what I advise on my customers and if there are any postal delays which then mean that it arrives after that baked on um, kind of like sell by date seven days from that date then you would need to put in a claim with um, whoever your provider is so mine's Royal Mail so I would put in a claim with them and say that perishable goods arrived after the recommended time which was one to two days because all of mine is posted first class and then they would process that claim whether they get a refund or they say it's not their issue it will be something along those lines but that's what I would recommend doing. I've had no issues in terms of things arriving after the sell by date. Um, everything arrives one to three days. There's only been one that arrived on the fifth day, but they ate it on that day. So it was no issue in terms of the sell by. So those are the stickers or some kind of labeling that you need to include. Um, so yeah, it, registered insurance, full ingredients list, allergens, um, storage and sell by date in terms of the legality side of it. That's what you need to have prepared. Um, then we're on to places to sell. So there's two main places that you would choose because I feel, I feel like you need some kind of shop in order to do this kind of like larger scale thing. 
Some people do it over Instagram. I take brownie orders through Instagram, but they're all in-person orders. So this means that the person is local. So they will either collect or they'll have it delivered. There is no postal items dealt with that way. Um, and then the other two options is Etsy and a website. So I currently have both because I'm transitioning. I created a website and it went live last week. So I'm getting quite a few orders on the website now. So people seem to be choosing that over Etsy. I'm still getting a lot of orders on Etsy. So that's why I've left it open because like I said in my website video, if you haven't watched it, I will put it up here. Um, but like I said in that video, it is a search engine. So even though there are quite high fees from Etsy, you're basically paying for people to be able to find you because on Google, it might be a little bit harder for people to find postal brownies on there. Whereas on Etsy, it's a refined search. You're not getting loads of rubbish being put in the search as well. So I do find that Etsy is good for that. However, the fees are four times what I pay on my website. So it means that I have to charge more for you guys. So anyone that has bought brownies off me or, is, or has bought um, like spreadsheet templates and anything like that that people have bought from me, I have to add on the fees because Etsy is more expensive than a website. But I would definitely recommend a website if you can. Mine is £10 a month and I have a shop on there. It's just a nice way to lay it all out. You can customise it a lot more because on Etsy you literally get an Etsy shop. Everyone's looks the same. The only difference is that you have a different name, a different photo and obviously different listings. But the actual shop looks the same as everyone else's so you really have to make yourself stand out by what you're selling because otherwise it's just another shop on Etsy. So I would definitely recommend a website if you can do it. But again, I've been on Etsy for two months now. I've built up quite a customer base with people buying from me. So I've now got recurring customers and just people finding me. So when I created the website and then I posted it all over my Instagram, I was, I'm was i getting 100 views on my website a day and multiple orders. So it just means that people are finding me. Whereas if you're starting, then I wouldn't recommend a website. I think that it's something to move on to after you've been on Etsy for a little while and you've got those customers coming to you because then you'll be getting found a bit easier on your website. So that's in terms of where I would recommend selling. And now we're on to what you need. So this is just a little tick list just to kind of round off this video. And it's just a recap basically. So obviously first thing is packaging. So you need to work out boxes, how you're gonna keep them fresh, postal bags, bubble wrap, that kind of thing. Um, I actually forgot, but my bubble wrap, I buy in a massive roll. So it is a giant roll like so um and it's about seven pounds for that roll it is much more like value for money than some other items i've bought a tiny roll like this from the post office before and it was a pound whereas that is seven pounds and it's giant so i definitely recommend going on amazon or ebay for all of your things because packaging is so cheap on those like search engines um then the next thing is recipe obviously you need to make sure that you have a solid recipe because if you're going to be selling the same thing over and over again you need something that you can easily recreate you don't want something that every time it's coming out different every time there's some that are wrong some that are right because otherwise you can't be making that every week or every time you're posting whereas my brownie and blondie recipes i have been doing for months and i know that every single time i bake them they come out exactly the same um, just a quick note, if you do ask me for a recipe um, by message, because I do get messages and like comments and stuff, that is the one thing that I don't share, obviously because I've spent time and money, because you spend money on a recipe and then sometimes it goes straight in the bin if it turns out badly. So that is the one thing that I don't share. So just before I get any comments, that is why I won't be responding or I'll be saying no, is because that is the one thing that I don't share. However, I do choose to share everything else with you, so I hope that you appreciate that. Um, then the next thing is the tracking process. So you need to have some kind of thing in place. The reason I say don't do it for Instagram in terms of postals is there is no tracking. Um, whereas on a website or on Etsy, you can fulfill orders or you can add notes to orders. So I add notes to all my orders saying posting on the 18th, posting on the 10th, so that I know when I'm posting everything, I can track it all. You can see when people have paid, when people haven't paid. Whereas you can't do that on Instagram, it's very hard to track. And when you're getting lots of orders, like even I'm noticing this past week, it is really nice to have sections where I, like on Etsy I've created, 
because if you're familiar with it, you'll know. You can create separate um, kind of like tabs in your orders. So I've created, I've got, um, what is it? Let me just bring it up. I've got where, so I've got new, which is just new orders that have been placed. Then I've got ready for delivery, which is once it's been baked, packaged in the fridge, all boxed up. And then I've got completed. So I've added that ready for delivery just because I find that it makes it a lot easier to see what is has been baked and is ready to go because I had just all of my orders and if someone places a new order and then someone's is being posted out on the 18th and then someone's is po being posted out a week later it's hard to keep track of it but I think when you're getting a lot of orders you need to have some kind of tracking process I also have a spreadsheet where I put all of the information from the order on there and then I can tally how much I've earned as well as any dates any addresses all of that so yeah, um, I actually have my spreadsheet pack on Etsy, so I will put the link for that down below in case anyone's interested because it does have all the tracking information on there. Um, then I would say logo products because when you're posting things out, especially when it's gifts um, with like potential new customers by sending it to someone as a gift, you want to make sure you have lots of logo products. So this is business cards, stickers, thank you cards, all of that because I think it's so important when someone opens it and it's got a nice thank you sticker or card and it's got all of your details on then they can look you up on Instagram if they want to tag you in any photos it's just easy for them to find if it's all in there and if it looks pretty then someone's more likely to pick it up and have a look if it just looks like a piece of rubbish paper then they're more likely to throw it away so yeah I would definitely recommend those and then like I said business cards again and lastly make sure you have your information in there so you can create these labels on um word so i might do i was thinking of doing a little video on how i create um things like labels and little care guides that i've made in little um so i can print them out on card and i was just going to show you guys how i create those on word just so that you know what kind of settings you have to change in order to fit like four to a page etc so yeah i was going to do a video on that for you guys but that is everything in terms of postals so that is literally postals 101 that should cover everything that you need to know about postals any issues that you have please just comment them down below i'll be happy to answer any questions in regards to postals i've been doing it for three months now so i'm pretty like set on all the postal information and I should be able to advise anyone if you are having any issues but yeah that is everything if you haven't already please like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video bye